this afternoon, you'll be having at least a NFL game to watch on 340 and the afternoon you will get the opportunity to see at least maybe I should knock on wood because uh, so much has been changed about this game and it's taken so long to get it actually played. Initially, this was going to be a Thanksgiving Eve, Thanksgiving evening game that all of us could sit around and watch. Instead, it's now going to be played the Steelers hosting the Ravens on a Wednesday afternoon, nearly a week after it was initially scheduled. So, We will have, finally, the completed week of NFL action. Probably some of you waiting on pins and needles to see whether you're going to win your fantasy weeks or not. Probably some of you out there waiting, hopefully, to cash a winning ticket and uh, the OutKick six-pack can have another winning week. We are sitting, I believe, at 2-2-1. And and I gave out the Steelers minus four. And the Steelers are now out to an 11-point favorite as a result of Lamar Jackson not being able to play and the uh, additional other positive COVID tests that have impacted things in a negative way for the Ravens, who last played what seems like forever ago when they lost in overtime to the Tennessee Titans. It will be nearly two weeks by the time they kick off this afternoon since that last game was play that also necessitated a lot of moving parts as it pertains to the weekend schedule, Monday foot Monday night football, Tuesday games next week. All of that, all those moving parts, the end result is we have a Wednesday afternoon football game that I imagine just about all of you out there will do your best to be able to watch. And we don't even have a Fox Bet Live television show. So for us, this worked out pretty well. Otherwise, we'd have been on going head-to-head with the football game. Instead, I'll kick up my feet uh, come 3.40 tomorrow, this afternoon and be able to, uh, to kick back and watch. So that is a big storyline that is out there. And honestly, this feels almost like a must-win game for the Ravens, even though they don't have Lamar Jackson, even though they don't have Mark Andrews, even though they have all of the injury uh, situation related news and injuries the wrong word the COVID positive related news uh, that is going to keep them from being able to play so that news is out there related to the Ravens and the Steelers some bit of positivity the CDC has decreased the amount of days that you have to quarantine for and that should be uh, positively impactful I would think Overall, for many different leagues and teams out there, now it's 10 days instead of 14 days. And honestly, there's some talk about going all the way down to seven days. And if that were the case, then these positive tests would be even less impactful than they are now. Now, positive big takeaway here is that in general, there remain no major issues associated with COVID positive tests in college football or the NFL anywhere. If you remember when we were talking about whether it was possible to play football or not, there was all the all the terrifying stories out there about how many football players were going to die. Do you remember that? Uh, The Corona Bros spreading all those stories. Oh, if they play college football this year, a bunch of players are going to die. And the data never supported that at all, but there were a lot of people running around like their hair was on fire. And uh, here we are coming into December now, a couple of weeks remaining. I'm going to get to the college football playoff rankings here in a moment, but there's been no major impact in the NFL, no major impact in college football, no major impact anywhere from any of these COVID positive tests, which is par for the course. Because as I've been saying for months, if you're under 50 years old, you're under more danger driving to and from work than you are dying from COVID. And uh, it's like people won't listen or won't believe it, but maybe now some people are starting to behave a little bit rationally because you're starting to see a general consensus out there that kids should be in school, for instance, and that school should have never shut down in the first place, that the data never supported the idea of kids not being in school starting in March. So, All of that rolling together there. Had a little bit of fireworks last night with the college football playoff reveal. 
And I don't know how many of you actually watch this show because most of the time there isn't uh, a lot of uh, real information that comes out in these Tuesday night uh, college football playoff ranking reveals. As we've talked about before on the show, you can kind of see where things are headed without needing to dive into the specifics of each week. And the big picture storyline here is, I'll just go ahead and tell you as it pertains to the college football playoff, Alabama is a monster favorite to make the college football playoff. All they have to do is beat LSU this weekend. And if they do that, then they would be scheduled to play against Arkansas. I'll get to whether or not that game would be played or not. But if Alabama wins those two games, assuming they are played, 10-0 10-0 Alabama goes ahead and punches its ticket to the playoff regardless of what happens in the SEC championship game. Meanwhile, Florida, also in the SEC, has a game this weekend against Tennessee where they're a big favorite. And then in theory, they would play LSU next weekend. And if they win those two, which they would be substantial favorites to do, then Florida at 9-1 and one would advance to the SEC championship game. And they would then need to beat... Uh, Alabama in that game in order to make the college football playoff. Meanwhile, also in the SEC, if you heard uh, me talking with Billy Lucci yesterday on the podcast, you've got Texas A&M with three games remaining. If they win all three of those games, then they will be at 9-1, and one, and I would imagine that they will be right squarely in the college football playoff race as well. A&M would need to beat Auburn, they would need to beat Ole Miss, and they would need to beat Tennessee between in the next three weeks, uh, finishing off on December 19th in order to get to 9-1 and one on the season. So that is the SEC where there are three teams alive for the college football playoff. This is a big deal, and I don't know how much attention it's going to get, but the ACC is now protecting its two teams that are in the mix to potentially make the college football playoff because they ended their games, which would take place on December 12th. Clemson will no longer play Florida State, and Notre Dame will no longer go on the road against Wake Forest. What does that mean? Well, first of all, both of those teams, to be fair, would have been substantial favorites in each of those games, but it means that if Clemson wins this weekend, and if Notre Dame wins this weekend, Notre Dame plays, by the way, Syracuse, then both of those teams would have a bye week and we would have a 10-0 Notre Dame team waiting to play against an 8-1 Clemson team. And if Notre Dame wins, they're in the college football playoff easily. And if Clemson wins, they're in the college football playoff easily. Clemson would be. I think both of these teams are now likely to be favorites to make the college football playoff because... As long as Notre Dame is competitive against Clemson and doesn't get blown out, I don't see how anybody is going to have a much better resume than 10-1 and Notre Dame would have in the event of a defeat. So, you got three SEC teams alive, two ACC teams alive. You can see a scenario where there are two SEC and two ACC teams And nobody else is even seriously considered, including Ohio State, who I will get to in a moment. What would that scenario look like, you may be asking? Well, if Florida upsets Alabama, and if Clemson beats Notre Dame as they would be favored to do, I think your four college football playoff teams would be Alabama, probably as your one seed. Sorry, probably not Alabama as your one seed in that scenario. I actually would be curious to see how they would seed it, but I think it would be Alabama, Florida, Notre Dame, and Clemson as your four playoff teams, two from the SEC, two from the ACC. Nobody else would get in. Now, still alive for the college football playoff is Ohio State in the Big Ten, who now is able to get back to practice and theoretically may be able to play against Michigan State. But if you watched the college football playoff special last night, there were some fireworks there. And later, uh, ESPN's Kirk Herbstreet walked it back. 
but he said he thought Michigan might not play against Ohio State to end the season. If that were to happen, then Ohio State would not be eligible to make the college football, uh, to, to make the Big Ten title game because they wouldn't play the requisite number of games. And if that were to happen, then the best that Ohio State could do is play another game on December 19th, which means the best record the Buckeyes could post is potentially 6-0. and Would six wins be enough to make the college football playoff when you look out there at Cincinnati, when you look at potentially 9-1 and Texas A&M, when you consider BYU, when you consider what might be going on in the rest of college football, it is an intriguing and difficult question to answer as we look forward. And unfortunately for Ohio State, if they don't play enough games, they may not make the college football playoff, not because of lack of talent and not because of losses, but just because of the Big Ten and also the Pac-12 making the decision to cancel their season back in July instead of going down the same pathway that the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12 all followed. Because all three of those conferences, the SEC, the Big 10, sorry, the SEC, the Big 12, and the ACC are all going to go ahead and crown champions, and they aren't going to be in any way disputable champions. They're going to get in virtually their entire college football season. And not only are they going to get in their entire college football season, they're going to do it with fans present, which is an incredible accomplishment. And we probably should spend more time praising all of those conferences, the ACC, the SEC, and the Big 12, and their commissioners and their leadership for being in a position where even with all the challenges from COVID and even with all the positive test insanity, those conferences are still going to get a champion. 